Awesome, welcome back. So we're very close to actually starting to code and starting to do data science. But, you know, we set all the technologies up. Now we want to set our course structure up so that once we start, nothing can stop us. So there are a couple of things that we want to do. As you know, we set up Git on our computer and now we're going to start a GitHub repository where we will keep all your code or all our code. <laughs> And then we want to start um, a Jupyter Notebook, which we already started. You can use that one. You can create a new one, doesn't matter. And then the last thing we want to do is to make sure that our GitHub repository is talking to the local repository that is on our computer so that when we make a change, we can push those changes to the GitHub and then everything will be tracked there. All the versions will be tracked there. The first thing, creating a GitHub repository. So we, Go to github.com. Uh, I hope you have an account already. If you don't, you can just, you know, it's kind of like any social media, any website, just create an account. Nothing specific or nothing special about that. When you end up on this page, what you need to do is to go to this little plus here and say new repository. Okay, I'm the owner of the repository and the name will be New York taxi analysis uh, this will be the name yes yeah they need dashes you can write descriptions if you like public makes sense because you want other people to see your work uh, at a readme file at a git ignore file I'll talk about what those are in a second um, and git ignore for Python yes let's create it okay so very empty, nothing in here yet, but let me talk about what there is. Readme file is basically what is displayed when people show up on your page. So when they first come here, they will see the contents of your readme file. I mean, it's in the name, right? Readme first. <laughs> so what you want to do, if you, if you feel like it, it can go inside here and then you can click this little pencil here to edit it. It's kind of the same as the markdown that we saw on um, Jupyter Notebooks. Then you can write an explanation, you know, explanation, explanation, ontology. Oh, and this is a little headline here. This is how I do things. And then you can update it. Now this is what people see when they end up here. Well, no, this is the readme file. This is your main file. This is how they, this is what they see in your readme file. This is important, especially if you're going to use this project in your uh, portfolio or any project in your portfolio, you should have a readme file that explains at least the type of data that you're using, the problem that you're solving and what methods you're using and even your results. So people don't have to go through your code to understand what you're doing. Uh, it's also a good idea to include images here, your charts, so your graphs about your performance, for example. So those are really good ideas. Next thing that we're going to do is to edit git ignore. So git ignore is a file that includes all the files that you do not want to upload to your GitHub repository, your remote GitHub repository from your computer. So one thing that we don't really want to add, especially if you're using, well, not especially only if you're using a Mac is this little file that is created in, it's kind of like a hidden file in every Mac fo folder. So you don't really want this to be uploaded to Git. And what else do I not want to be uploaded to the remote repository is the data files because you know, the data files are, um, not necessary. They don't have to be here. If someone wants to keep going with our project, with our work that we're doing here, they can easily download it. It's a good idea to include where you downloaded the data from on your readme so people can download it for themselves. But if you don't, if you include the data here, it's just going to be, you know, too much time trying to upload and it's really not necessary. All you need to track here. I mean, the main goal of GitHub is to, or Git is to track your changes and you don't, and you're not really going to change the data. So you don't really need to upload it, you know, or change the track, the changes. 
So by doing this, I'm just saying everything that ends with .csv, just ignore it. Don't upload it. And this is good enough for now. So what I need to do to make sure that there is a communication channel between GitHub, the GitHub repository and my computer is to clone this repository to my computer. So then they will have this invisible connection that everything, every time something changes in one, the other one will be aware of it. They will not automatically update each other though. We have to do that manually, but they will at least be aware that there is a change on the other one. So I'll click here, copy this link using this little button here and then go to my computer. I'll start the terminal. This is the one that, where the Jupyter Notebook is running. So I just need to click Command N and create a new page. Then, so right now I'm in the um, root folder of my computer. Uh, I need to navigate to my desktop because that's where I want to have my files. So how you can do this if you never used terminal before, there are just a couple of comments that you need to know. LS is one where it will show you based on where you are right now, all the files and folders that are included here. So as you can see, desktop is just one step away. Then I can say move to, which is CD desktop. And now I'm in desktop and I can clone my files here. So what I'm going to do is to say, get clone paste the link that I had and then paste it here. And you saw here and now I have a folder and that is the clone of the one that lives remotely in GitHub. So let's take a look inside. We have the readme and we had git ignore, but that is a hidden file. So that's why we cannot see it here. So that's awesome. We created the connection and next thing that we want to do is to create the notebook and make sure that notebook also lives in our local repository. And I'll show you how to do it now. Nice. So uh, let's start our first notebook. I know Jupyter Notebook is still running here. So if I go here, I'm in the desktop section and I want to create my first Jupyter Notebook inside the GitHub uh, clone, the clone repository. So I go in here and then I just say new Python notebook and then I name it the presentable notebook. So sometimes you do some side analysis where you need some other dirty notebook where you just need to type a couple of lines of code and you try to understand something. Uh, but I want to keep this notebook my main notebook where I only have everything, all my results that are presentable and everything in order. So that's why I call it the presentable notebook. So let's write some simple things. We can write, you know, import pandas, which is, you know, the, the, the main thing that we do in every data science project. So yeah, I import pandas. Um, yeah, this is, this is good for now. And then I do command save and save this notebook. So let's check it out here. Yes, we have our first notebook. So as I said, by cloning, we created this invisible connection between our GitHub repository and the local repository. So what I want to do right now is GitHub is aware that there is a change in this local one. And what I want to do right now is to push these changes to the uh, remote repository. And that's kind of the jargon that we use. So let me show you how to do this. So I'm on desktop right now. And correctly, we have the files folder, New York taxi analysis folder, and my first Jupyter notebook, which was the first one that we created for, you know, showing you around Jupyter notebooks. So I want to go inside the New York taxi one. You don't have to type the whole name. If you write a little bit and then press tab, it will complete it for you. So I go inside and then, okay, these are what I have. So what I want to see, you can do this, get status. will show you what is, what has changed since last time. What, what does the remote repository not know? So presentable notebook is the one. Uh, there, there are a sec sequence of actions that you need to take to push your changes to the remote repository. First one is get add. And when you put that, you're saying everything. And then you need to commit. 
but you always need to put a message and you need to put a message because you want to explain the change that you're doing. Why did you change something? Why did you add something? Why did you remo remove something? So you just need the small explanation. And I'm just going to say kicking off the project by creating a notebook. Okay, that's done. It's committed. Now what we want to do is to push it. So it's now ready. It's a change. It's packaged, nicely packaged. All we need to do is just push it to the remote repository. I do git push, write my github name, paste my password, it will not show anything in your password, and it's pushed. Well, it is being pushed, now it's pushed. <laughs> so I can go to my repository and change, to see, um, check to see if everything is right. It looks like everything is right. I have the notebook here. Let's go inside. And GitHub has a very nice way of showing the notebooks. So yeah, we have everything that we have here, also here. So that's perfect. And last but not least, the thing that we need to do now is to download the data from its source to our local computer, at least as much data as we need to uh, uh, work with. So let's do that. And then we'll be all ready, I promise, everything will be ready to start doing our project.